recording has great finally turned his self and cross the planet into a phenomenal legend of the ongoing crisis. Every week took a shot. His mark on his crap could not be denied. After his defeat, our European monarchs had gone to work to destroy the traditional balance. And we had to tell crap. The British, why are we getting the reports of American troops on these returning weeks? We have a difficult time regaining the power of the legendary island to the rule of the Berlin. What? We're going to see another revolution like the president than another one. The reaction to this whole rule in the Belgium of Germany and Italy propelled us forward the ideas and activities of the modern united for the national rights of Russian history. And that code still remains for Johnson's sixth law in various modern countries. The modern law of the lot to the French legacy of the current U.S. history of the U.S. history of the U.S. history of the U.S. back in the turn of the U.S. history 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 of the
Pickett, you're going back on the island. All right, you psychopath. I've been waiting years for this. I hate you. I've always hated you. Harney had not only ordered Pickett back onto the island, but his department even notified the British that it did not recognize the joint occupation settlement, while everyone else had decided on peace. Harney appeared to still be threatening war. Needless to say, a furious Winfield Scott soon removed him from command and sent him elsewhere. In Harney's absence, the joint occupation went ahead, and the troops actually got along together quite well. The British attended 4th of July celebrations at the American camp, while the Americans visited the British for Queen Victoria's birthday. Even Pickett became good friends with his British counterpart. War, it seemed, had been avoided, thanks largely to the level-headed actions of the Royal Navy and General Winfield Scott. Of course, the islands were still in dispute, and the question of who exactly owned them still had to be answered. That answer would have to wait, because while San Juan was at peace, the nation was tearing itself apart. When civil war broke out in 1861, the issue of San Juan just wasn't that important. Harney, despite being a southerner, remained in the U.S. Army, but was eventually removed from command at St. Louis when his loyalty to the Union came under suspicion. More famously, Captain Pickett, a native Virginian, went on to become a Confederate general. Pickett's charge at the Battle of Gettysburg remains one of the most famous moments of the entire war and marked a major turning point. U.S. relations with Britain actually soured during the war. The British, missing their supply of southern cotton, initially looked like they may intervene on the side of the Confederacy. There was the Trent Affair, when Confederate diplomats were discovered and arrested on a British mail steamer. And then there were the British-built ships sold to the Confederacy that wreaked havoc on northern commerce. When the Civil War ended, furious American politicians called on the British to pay reparations. And by now, a long list of hot issues existed between them. And yes, on that list remained, 12 years later, still the issue of who owned these gosh darn islands. That issue, it was finally agreed, would be submitted to international arbitration. The Empire of Germany would decide, with the British and Americans presenting arguments. The American argument was reportedly presented with a little more pizzazz, a little more zing. And in the end, when the Germans made their decision, they awarded the San Juan Islands to the United States. When an aging Douglas heard the news, he said that there was no possible way the British argument had been presented correctly. But that was that. The British conceded. And on the 25th of November, 1872, the last British troops left the island. As the Americans entered the British camp to raise their flag, they found that the British had removed the flagpole. One last up yours to Uncle Sam. By this time, Charles Griffin had already left the island, and the Hudson's Bay Company eventually sold their sheep farm. And so, there you have it. A dangerous situation that almost brought two great powers to war, triggered by the shooting of a pig. But thanks to more level-headed minds and an eagerness for peace and cooperation, conflict was avoided, and the only casualty of this pig war was, well, just a pig. But how different could things have been? What if the British had attempted to arrest Pickett? What if they had landed troops? Could the two sides have actually gone to war? Could America have invaded Canada? Could it, perhaps, still invade Canada? Think about it. Why not? We have the manpower. We have the arms. It's our manifest destiny. Picture a future where American Mounties wear red, white, and blue and hail the stars and stripes where Wayne Gretzky would wave the American flag every 4th of July in the streets of Montreal. Maple syrup, the greatest American food. Banff, the greatest American national park. One united nation under the leadership of our glorious president, Drake, no longer shall we tolerate our smug neighbors to the north with their affordable insulin and endless comments complaining that I don't talk about Canada enough in my videos. That's right, Canadians. Watch your backs. Sleep with one eye open tonight. Because Biden's coming, baby. And this time, he's coming with a vengeance!